Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to be assembling an 86 foot high cube four door boxcar, Denver and Rio Grande. All right, so let's open up our box and make sure we got all the parts inside. Put the lid off to the side. So inside the box, you should have a body. Put that off to the side. You should have a small bag of parts. There'll be some tissue in there. I don't need that right now. You should have an underframe. There should be a floor. Now inside there should be some instructions. Now on these instructions, there is a note and it says, after car is assembled and track tested, use light dabs of plastic cement in two or three places in each side of the body to secure the body to the floor. What that means is that when, after you have this all assembled, you're gonna put a little bit of glue along the edges here so that when you put it all together, it's gonna stay together. So let's put that off to the side. There will be a weight inside as well. You're gonna need the weight, that's very important. So we got our underframe, we got our floor, we got our weight. We have a small bag of parts here. We're gonna open up this bag of parts, dump out our parts into the lid there. So inside our parts bag, we should have two sets of wheels. We should have two of the coupler boxes, which are swivel coupler boxes. There should be two clips to hold the couplers in. There should be a brake wheel. There should be two screws to hold the weight in, and then there will be two screws to hold the wheels on. And then of course there will be some horn and hook couplers. Oh, we got three in this box, oh nice, but we're still not gonna use those, put those off to the side. So there's a couple things that we gotta do here. Um, this is pretty basic uh, build, not too much to it. Uh, we'll stick this stuff back in here. We don't need our brake wheel yet or our screws. So the number one thing that we gotta do first is we're gonna need to inspect our parts. Now, the underframe, you just wanna go through it and make sure that there's uh, no flashing or anything on it. Make sure that all this area here is all smooth. Um, the floor, you're gonna wanna make sure that the floor doesn't have any flashing on it. Make sure that it's all smooth especially in these areas here. And the weight, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your weight is straight. Now this is very important. And you're gonna to wanna to look down the edge of the weight here to see if it is straight. Now this doesn't look too bad. We are gonna just adjust it a little bit, give it a little bit of a bend wherever you see that it has the bend. And that'll look good like that, okay? So you wanna make sure that's nice and straight and that there's no flashing on any of the floor parts. Also, these parts here, okay, you're gonna to wanna to check for flashing on these guys because there is going to be flashing in here and you're going to want to trim this flashing off because it is very critical that you get this flashing off of here because it will impede the performance and it will jam up the coupler from turning all right so you're going to want to make sure both of those are nice and clean there's no flashing or anything in there which there usually is flashing in here. It's usually very common that these have flashing on them. You wanna make sure they're nice and clean so that they swivel well and they're not gonna bind up and get caught and jam. Okay, so we're gonna start by assembling our coupler boxes here. Now, this particular model has a known issue for the hooks sagging and hanging down low. So we are going to be installing a number 27 underset KD hook. So we are going to take and put our KD spring in first. Now you wanna make sure you clean out any of the flashing. Make sure that sits in there right. Same with this one. Okay, you wanna make sure that they are sitting down nice and flat like that. And then we are going to take our dry graphite here and just give it a little tiny bit of dry graphite in there and then we can go ahead and stick our hook in. Once we put the hook in there like that we can go ahead and stick our clip on top, clip it down like so, make sure that the hook is free. Now you're going to want to make sure you give it a little squeeze just to make sure that it's all nicely clipped on there. 
it's going to stay on there. It's not going to fall off or anything like that. Put our KD coupler in there. And then we can go ahead and we can stick our clip right over top. And there we have our couplers together. So once you have your coupler boxes all put together, you're going to want to make sure that there's nothing sticking up on this side especially the clip sticking past here. You want to make sure that there's nothing sticking up. You want to make sure it's all nice and smooth because this is going to ride on here and it has to be nice and smooth when it goes back and forth like that. Same with this side. You want to make sure both sides sit in there like that and that they ride nice and smoothly and nothing is going to catch like that there. That seems like it's catching a little bit. So what do we got here? Anything on the side here? Make sure it's nice and smooth. Make sure this is all nice and smooth. If there's any flashing here, you got to remove it. Make sure that it goes nice and freely. You don't want it getting hung up here, otherwise it can derail. Make sure that they are nice and free. Good. All right, so next we can go ahead and stick our underframe on. And again, you want to make sure in this area here and this area here that there is no flashing or anything and that it is all nice and smooth. So then that sits down on there like that. And then from there we can put our wheels on. Because that these are known for the hooks being too low and for the hooks sagging, we might have to put some washers in here, but we're gonna see how it goes first. Next, we are gonna take the longer screws and we are going to stick the long screws in to hold the wheel. And you want to make sure that the screw is snug, but the wheel still has freedom of movement. And you're going to want to make sure that this also has, the hook has freedom of movement. So this is a little bit too tight. So you're going to want to back that off a little bit. There we go. You're going to want to make sure that's nice and free. And then we can go ahead and do the other side. Now, sometimes the holes are not molded correctly. You can take and just kind of open up the hole a little bit with a pick or something like that. And then we can go ahead and stick our screw in. And you wanna make sure that the wheel turns and that the hook turns freely, like so. That's very nice, a little tighter actually. You wanna adjust it so that it's, it's nice. And we might have to put washers in this later uh, once we stick it on the, uh, the coupler height gauge here. All right, so we got our wheels on, we got our hooks on and everything like that. That's pretty much the underside there. We got to flip it over and we are going to stick our weight in. Now, weight goes in there like that. There's two little posts right here for screws. So we take our two short screws here. They are. And then those short screws just stick right in the holes here to hold the weight in. Here we go. And you just screw the weight down like that. Not too tight, it's just plastic. And we will do the same with the other side. Okay, get the screw in there on this side, tighten it down. Not too tight, because it's just plastic. So there we go. We have the bottom pretty much done. There's not much to these. Next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the body. And the only thing that we need to do with the body is to stick the brake wheel in. Now, the brake wheel sits in there nice and snugly without glue, that's perfect as that one does so that it's not going to come out it's not going to fall out and it's nice and snug in there and we didn't have to put any glue on it and then the floor just slides inside the body like that and you want to make sure that you get it down all the way there's a ridge actually in there holding it and there we go so now we're going to stick it on our track and check the coupler height so we have here our kd coupler height gauge and I don't know if you can see that very well, but you want the center lines of the hook to line up. Now, as you can see, this one is a bit low and the, the trip pin is, is touching the bottom. You don't really want it to touch the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we are actually going to add a couple of washers to these wheels to raise them up because we already have an underset hook in there. So there's not uh, much more that we can do with that. So we are gonna have to put washers in there. So we're going to need to put washers in there. So what you're going to do is you can just pull this right back out, put the body off to the side, unscrew the wheels, take the wheel off. And we have a couple of KD washers here. So we're going to just stick a washer right over top there like that. Make sure that uh, it's on there all the way. 
and then put the screw back in. After you put the screw in, you wanna double check and make sure that everything is moving freely. And then do the same to the other side. There. Stick your washer on there. Stick the wheel back on. And again, check and make sure that it's moving freely. Stick it back in. Like so. And then we want to back on to the track. So we are going to need to bend our trip pin a little bit. So you want to take your trip pin pliers. Just give it a little bend right there. Same with the other side. Take and just give it a little bend upward. So now you can see that the hooks are lined up and you wanna make sure that the trip pin there doesn't touch that bottom plate. So this little, little plate right here that the uh, KD cup, you wanna make sure that that is not quite touching. It should be just above it. So you might have to adjust it and you might have to put more than one washer in there depending upon the, the situation, but you want it to be uh, nice and lined up like that. That there is really a, a nice center line to center line line up there. So there we have our 86 foot high cubed four door Rio Grande box car all assembled. Now we have to uh, test it on the layout and make sure that it's uh, gonna clear everything and everything is working properly. And then you can, if you want to glue the floor to the body. Now me personally, I'd rather not do that because at a later date, if you want to need to take it apart for any reason or if something gets damaged and the glue makes it very difficult to get apart. You know, if you don't glue it, it does stay together rather well. You just have to be careful when you pick it up that the floor doesn't come out of it because it will come out. But other than that, there's our 86 foot high cube four door box car all assembled. Let's go try it out. <music> 